Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15. <clears throat> and here the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Corinth. And he says, For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. For ye have not many fathers. Today, the title of my message is The Father Figure That We Need. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you that once more we can go to your word, open our hearts, open our minds, dear God. Make us to understand your will. Make us to understand your message for us. I pray for every father present, Lord, as they hear this message. Bless each one. Bless everyone today, Heavenly Father. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. The father figure that we need. There's actually a song with the title Father Figure. Do you know that? How many knows that? Hindi nyo alam na mayroong kanta na ang pamagat ay father figure. The words go like this. I will be your father figure. Put your tiny hand in mine. I will be your preacher, teacher. Anything you have in mind. I will be your father figure. I have had enough of crimes. I will be the one who loves you till the end of time. Parang ang ganda, no? But not the video that goes with it. This song actually was sang by George Michael. And he wrote that way back in 1988. Father figure. But you know, the father figure today is something that's been distorted by the world. Iba na ang ibig sabihin ng father figure. Kung sa marami, ang pagiging father is just in the sense na ikay nagkaanak and you are a father. Wala nang pinag-uusapan kung anong katangian ng ama, kung ano ang ginagawa ng ama, kung ano ang minamanifest ng ama, kung anong responsibilities ng ama, kung anong ugali ng ama, kung anong mindset ng ama. But I believe today that we have the word of God so that we may all be taught. Amen? May I say this, everyone who are here, the word of God is good for each one. It's good for every individual. It's good for relationships. It's good for husband and wives. It's good for children. It's good for moms. It's good for fathers. It's good for families. Amen? The word of God is good even for communities. The word of God is even good for our society. It's good for the government. It's good for the president. It's good for all of those in the legislative. It's good for those who would be in the judiciary. The word of God. It is a lighthouse. We believe that the word of God is relevant. And so we study what it says. We study its principles. We learn. Amen? We learn. And today, we honor our fathers. Why do we do such? But not ang ginagawa na bigyan natin ng parangal ang ating mga ama. Do you realize that we are simply obeying the fifth commandment? Why? Because the fifth commandment of God simply says this, Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That's found in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. It was once more reiterated in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 16. In Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 16, this is what the Bible says, Honor thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee. And so we see that the honoring of fathers was the fifth 
in God's list of Ten Commandments. And it has never been abrogated. You understand? Hindi pa binaliwala ito through generations. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ himself quoted this commandment. A certain young ruler came to him and asked a question. And the Lord answered him this way in the book of Matthew chapter 19, verses 17 to 19. In verse, the latter part of verse 17, Ang sabi ng Panginoon dun sa young ruler na ito, But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And in verse 19, the Lord Jesus Christ says, Honor thy father and thy mother. And so we see, the Old Testament sees that. I mean, the Old Testament gives that as a command. The Lord Jesus Christ came in the New Testament, and he reiterates that. Okay? And then, the Apostle Paul, who would represent someone who would be in our kind of day. What did Paul say? In Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 2 to 3, this is what Paul tells the Ephesian church. He says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Now, ano ang ating maaaring maging conclusion dito? Na nakita natin, nasa Ten Commandments yan. It was quoted by the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, many years after, and it once, it's once more quoted by the Apostle Paul. The fact is this, the honoring of fathers and mothers have not been abrogated. It's still a command that is true even in our day. Do you understand? Tayo mga Pilipino, gustong gusto natin na nagbibigay tayo ng galang sa ating mga nakatatanda. Di ba? Alam nyo yan ang isang bagay na ayaw na ayaw ko sa Western world. Oo. Eh minsan nakarinig ako, tumatawag, Hi Joe! Akala ko kung sino yung tinatawag, lolo niya pala. Isipin mo. E dito sa atin eh, nagmamano tayo sa mga magulang natin. Nagpopo at opo tayo. Right? But with the advent of the Western style, okay, ng buhay, ng kabuhayan, nawawala na ang pagbibigay karangalan sa mga magulang. But then, let me just say, it's according to the Word of God. Amen? It's not just according to what we are as Filipinos. Para sa ating mga tunay na Kristiyano, okay? Ang pagbibigay galang at pagbibigay parangal ay ginagawa natin in obedience to the command of God. Okay. Now, may I say this? Lahat ito ay nag indicate mga kapatid, na ang Diyos ay nagbibigay halaga sa ating pagpaparangal sa ating mga ama. Naunawaan niyo man sinabi ko? Ha? Ang Diyos mismo ang ay, ay nagbibigay halaga okay? sa ating pagpaparangal sa ating mga magulang. Okay? Now, sa ating mga mana ng palataya, Merong itinuturo sa atin ng banal na kasulatan na si Abraham ay ating ama. That is, sa pananampalataya. Hindi tayo mga Israelitas. Hindi tayo mga Hudyo. Okay? But then, dahil sa ating pananampalataya kay Kristo Jesus, tinuturo ng banal na kasulatan na ang lahat ng may ganyang pananampalataya ay tumuturing kay Abraham bilang kanilang ama. Why? Sapagkat si Abraham ang tinatawag nating ama ng pananampalataya. Sa lahat ng may pananampalataya, anong ibig sabihin niyan? Sa lahat ng may pagkakilala sa Diyos, sa lahat ng may pagsunod sa Diyos, ang ayon sa kanyang salita, yun ang pananampalataya. Okay, 
if we may turn to Romans chapter 4 and verse 16. Turn with me there. Nasa screen ng ating verse. Ang sabi dito, Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Now take note of this. Not to that only which is of the law, referring to the Israelites, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, that's us, who is the father of us all. Now, the Bible makes reference to Abraham as being the father of us all in respect to faith. Do you understand? Okay? Hindi tayo nga ginagawang mga isilita sa hudyo, but because ang pananampalatayang yan, ang siyang sa atin ay nagbubuklod. Malalim niya tayo nagbubuklod o nag-iisa. Okay. Ngayon, ano ang significance nito? Sino ba si Abraham? At bakit siya binigyan ng karangalan? Who is Abraham? And why would he be given such an honor as to be recognized as being the father of us all who have faith? Yun ang tanong. Pastor, bakit po? Bakit kinakailangan meron tayong reference kay Abraham as the father of faith? Bakit natin binibigyan siya ng karangalan? The Bible gives honor to Abraham as to cite him as being the father of us all. Isn't it a privilege? Isn't it an honor for the word of God to say, Abraham is the father of us all? Hindi ba karangalan yun? Tama? Okay. Alam nyo, karangalan na maging tatay ka ng buong barangay. Karangalan na ikaw ay maging tatay din ng lahat ng lighthouse. Ang tatay ko nung araw, tatay ng bayan eh. Lahat tatay sa kanya. E minsan naiingit na nga ako dahil lahat tatay sa tatay ko. Tinatanong ko siya, tay, bakit lahat tatay sa iyo? Hindi bali anak, anak pa rin naman kita talaga. Anyway, set that aside. My point is this. Bakit binigyan si Abraham ng gayong matayog na karangalan? Okay? As to have the place as being called the father of us all. Why? It is because of a testimony na mayroon siya. Bakit, Pastor? Ano ba ho ang testimony ni Abraham na siya ay binigyang karangalan na tawaging amang Abraham? Ito, open to Genesis 18.19. You know, you need to understand, we need to understand this thought today so that we may well understand the whole message. Ang punto natin ay bakit binigyan si Abraham ng gayong karangalan to be respected, to be honored as the father of us all. Ano ang dahilan? And I say this was the reason. In Genesis 18.19, God himself speaking, referring to Abraham, he says of Abraham, For I know him, oh, God knows Abraham, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Take note. Ano nga ang ginawa ni Abraham? And here the Lord said, Abraham will command his children and his household after him. Kinilala ng Diyos si Abraham bilang isang ama who would rule his house and his children after him not after others. Not after the world. At ano mangyayari? And they shall keep the way of the Lord. 
Now, my point is this. Do you follow what I'm saying? Binigyan ng Diyos sa Abraham ng gayong prestigious na pagkakilala at karangalan na tawaging ama ng lahat ng may pananampalataya because of this. Meaning, the reason why Abraham is being given honor is simply because he accomplished something. Amen? Alam niyo mga kapatid, nabubuhay tayo na sa paligid natin ay maraming tinatawag na your honor. Tama? Oy. Nagkaroon na ng position, your honor na. Okay? Nagsuot lang ng gown, your honor na. Are you listening? Nagkaroon na ng title sa pangalan, your honor na. But that does not necessarily mean that they live up to such an honorable position. Two. Pastor, inaatake mo na naman yung mga your honor. Naku, marami yan sa kongreso, mga kapatid. Tama? Minsan sa judiciary, marami rin. Naku, sa gobyerno, marami yan. But the fact is this. Medyo, they are not living up to what should really be honorable in their lives and in their character. That is the reason in our text, this is what it says. Ye have, ye, ye have, ye not, ano ba ito sabi niya? Ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. Ano ba ang nagko-constitute ng pagiging ama? At kailangan o kailan nagiging totoong marangal ang ating mga ama. Okay? And so let's go back. God spoke of Abraham that he was the kind of a father who would command his children after him. Now, let me say this. Do we realize that if ever we would have such a mind to honor God, Tagalogin natin, kung mayroon man tayo, mga kapatid, na magiging, magiging ugali as to give reverence to God, it would simply be because we have fathers who have taught us. Why do I say that? Kaya pinagpalahagahan ng Panginoon si Abraham and give him honor. Why? Because God recognizes what we do as fathers. Look with me. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 7 to 10. It says, if ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Meron daw tayo, mga ama, physically. Okay? Mga ama, sa ating relations. At tayo'y kinokorekt nila at binibigyan natin sila ng reverence. Tama? And then he says, sabi ng writer, Shall we not rather, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of Spirits and live? So we're, we're talking of honor. God honored Abraham. Why did God honor Abraham? Because of what he was as a father. Okay? Now, because naroon sa pagiging ama, mga kapatid, ang ating pagbabalik sa Diyos ng reverence. Do you understand? Kaya ang kinakailangan 
ibalik natin ang tunay na kahalagahan ng father figure sa ating mga sarili. And I give this as a challenge to our fathers today. Amen? Ano ang mga katangian ng father figure that we find in the Word of God? I'm now going to the meat of my message. That's supposed to be my introduction. Now, ano-ano ang katangian ng maaari nating tawaging the father figure that we should have? Tinanong ko kung ano sabihin ng father figure. Now, a father figure ay hindi necessarily na ikaw ay biological na ama ng isa. Sapagkat marami sa atin dito mga kapatid ay wala tayong kinalakihang ama. Tama ba? May mga ilan sa atin dito na siguro hindi man lang natin nasulyapan ang ating ama. Naalala ko si tatay nung araw. Batang bata pa siya. He was about 12 years old nang pinatay ng hapon ng kanyang ama. At simula noon, siya na ang tumayong tatay doon sa pamilya. Okay? Ang kanyang naging father figure ay yung kanyang uncle na pinagbilinan ng aking lolo na ang sabi sa kanya, bahala ka na kibiyan. So kinilala niyang amain, ama yung kanyang angko. Okay? Tinuruan siya magmaneho ng uncle na yan, tinuruan siya magtrabaho, Ganon. Nagkaroon siya ng father figure. And so ang mensaheng ito ay hindi lamang sa mga tatay na naririto na, may, na mayroong mga biological children. Ito'y tumatayo rin sa mga tatay dito na kayo'y tumatayong tatay-tatayan. No? Parang hindi maganda pang yung tatay-tatayan. No? Parang patay-patayan. So, no? Tumatayo kayong tatay-tatayan ng marami. Tama ba? Oo. Dito sa Lighthouse, marami tayong tatay dito. Naririyan si Tatay Melchor, naririyan si Tatay Tural, Tatay Jun, no, of course, naririyan no, si Tatay Nestor. Marami tayong tatay dito. At tinatawag natin silang tatay, hindi lang dahil medyo malayo yung edad nila sa atin. Subalit sila nagpapakita ng katangian. And the more, ang sinasabi ko mga kapatid, na kinakailangan kunin natin ang ating challenge na makita kung ano ang father figure that would be consistent with the Word of God. Amen. And so be given that honor which even God would recognize. Like Abraham. Okay? Now, what do we need? Number one. You ready with this? Okay, number one. We need a father that takes as his prime responsibility to take lead in the spirituality of their children and their relationship with God. Kailangan natin ng mga amain. Tama ba yun? Ama. Ayun. Kailangan natin ng mga ama na itinuturing nila na kanilang prime na responsibilidad upang pangunahan ang espiritualidad ng kanilang sambahayan, ng kanilang mga anak, pati ng kanilang relationship sa Diyos. Do you believe that? Bakit, Pastor? Ano ba ang biblical premise nito? Hindi ba hinahayaan lang natin sila? Okay? Kung gusto nilang maging etis, bahala sila sa buhay nila. Well, but the Bible teaches us in fact, it was a command to every father then. In Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verses 5 to 9, this was the command of God to the nation of Israel. He tells them, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Alam niyo kung ganun lang ang sasabihin, okay sana, no? God talking to everyone. But then, we find that he was particularly talking to fathers. Verse 6, And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart, fathers, and thou shalt teach them diligently. To whom? 
unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates what will they write this way they will write thou shalt love the Lord thy God Meaning, kung tayo nabubuhay sa isang society na walang pagkakilala sa Diyos, walang pag-ibig sa Diyos, nakikinig ba tayo? Walang respeto sa Diyos, okay? Walang reverence sa Diyos, it would be a failure of fathers. Oh yes. In the book of Sam, number 78, verses 5 to 7, this is what Sam, the psalmist says. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to whom? To their children. Para ano? That the generation to come might know them. Even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they, the children, might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. So, practically, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, mga guests, kung kaya ang tao'y may pagkakilala sa Diyos, it is because fathers took their lead. Oh, that should be the father figure that we should have. Amen? Eh, minsan, alam nyo, ang natitira na lang, ang naiiwan na lang, na quality ng father figure, ay eh, yung paramihan ng anak. Tama? Sa maraming asawa. Ay, ako tatay ako eh. Bakit? Marami akong anak. Pero wala tayong iniiwan na katuruan sa ating mga anak. Anak, kumilala ka sa Diyos. Kumilala ako sa Diyos. Kumilala ka sa Diyos. At kung meron kang unang mamahalin, mahalin mo ang Diyos. Oh, I would that in Lighthouse, we would have fathers who would diligently teach that to their children. May I say this? Alam nyo ba na ang pinaka-educational institution na itinatag ng Diyos ay hindi Department of Education? Ano? Is the family. Sadly, mga kapatid, wala na pong tinuturo ang mga ama ngayon, kahit ang mga ina. Ipinapaubaya na lang ang lahat ng kaalaman sa mga teachers sa labas. Ika nga, ang kanilang pagiging ama ay pinapa-outsource nila. Right? Pastor, makaluma naman niyang tinuturo mo sa Bible, mga kapatid. Hindi pa po naamen dito. It is still true. It is still practical. Fathers, do not just leave your children to church. Do not just leave your children sa kabahay at hinahayaan nyo sila. Bring them. Take the lead. That was what Abraham said kung kaya si Abraham ay binigyan ng parangal ng Diyos. Tama po ba? Oh yes. Binabati nga pala natin si Dr. Eric Torres. Sapagkat nung isang linggo ay binigyan siya ng isang award. Ulirang Ama 2013. Or isa siya sa mga Ulirang Ama sa 2013. 
Praise God for that. Amen. I also had the opportunity to be awarded the same award last 2011. Ulirang Ama, 2011. Number two, what else comes with the father figure? Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 5 to 11. Don't worry, I'll be fast with this. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with what? Sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Wow! Anong prinsipyo po ito? Itinuturo sa atin ng banal na kasulatan na ang ating Diyos ay nagbibigay din sa atin ng Board of Education. Anong ibig sabihin yan? Ha? Nang disiplina at ng correction. Tama? Most corrections come from this. Totoo yun. Maraming katuruan na ating sinusunod dahil direktang binibigyan tayo ng instruction. But sometimes, ayaw natin sundin. We would want to do it our way. Okay. Then God dealeth with us. God deals with us His way. Tama? No. Kaya dumadaan tayo sa maraming pagsubok ng buhay. Bakit? Sapagkat yan ay inaalaw ng ating Diyos dumaan sa atin upang tayo'y matuto. Na ang ganyang gawa ay ginagawa din naman ng ating human fathers. Observe. Verse 9. Anong sabi sa verse 9? Bear with me here. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them what? Reverence. Kinokorek tayo ng ating mga ama at binibigyan natin sila ng galang at pagkilala. Shall we not rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they are human fathers. Verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but He, our God, for our profit, that we might be partakers of His holiness. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Anong sinasabi sa atin dito? Kailangan natin ng mga ama na magtuturo at magkokorek at magdidisiplina. Huh! Ganun kasimple yan. Amen! Pastor? Nasa Bible ba yun? Yes. Mga ama, panahon na na ating itake yung responsibility at wag lang nating sabihin, Ma! Disiplinahin mo nga yan! Let's be practical here. Because someone should be a father figure. Yes? Oh. Alam niyo, kahapon nag-uusap kami ng mga staff. Okay? Sabi ko sa staff, saan ba natin, nala, saan ba natin nakuha? Okay? Yung katuruan o yung ugali na kapag kayo na aking staff ay nagsumbong ng kahit na anong problema ng kapwa mana ng palataya, ay masamang ugali yun. At sinasabi, pag ikaw ay isang bungero kay pastor, ayaw namin sa iyo. I'd like all my staff to be isang bungeros. 
Why? Because I care for you. And I will appreciate them more. Now let's do a standard here. I am no pastor just to be called a pastor. I am a pastor because I love you. I am a pastor because I care for you. You know why? Because we live lives. Amen. Hey, pastor, ayoko na lang magsalita. Ibahala na sila sa buhay nila. Kasi haharap na sila sa Panginoon. Eh. Gusto niyo sisihin ako ng Panginoon na hindi ko kayo naturuan ng tama. Amen ba? Kaya, leaders, fellowship leaders, wag tayong magkait na pag meron tayong alam na maling ugali at problema ng ating mga young people, then let us take that role. Wag natin iwan sa kung saan na lang ang mga issues na yan. Alam nyo nang may problema ang mga young people, hinahayaan natin. Alam nyo nang mali ang kanilang ginagawa, hahayaan natin. Then let me know about it. And I will appreciate you. I will even give you an incentive. Oh yes! Minsan makikita ko pa sa FB na masama na nga ang ginagawa. Kailan pa natin naging ugali na magtago ng masama? Amen? Ngayon, pag problema na, iyak. Iyak ako, nabuntis kasi. Eh, tinago mo eh. Naunawahan ba natin? So, if you ever come to know of anyone who you think made me aware of a situation, love that man. Love that lady because she cares for you or he cares for you. Magagalit ka ba sa nanay mo dahil sinumbong ng nanay mo sa tatay mo ang problema mo? Manaman eh, dapat sekreto natin yun eh. Hindi ba? Am I talking sense? Let me show you. Proverbs 22.15 Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. We need fathers to take the correction responsibilities. Amen? Don't allow the police to do that for you. Don't allow the teachers to do that for you. Let's do it ourselves. That's the father figure that we need. Proverbs 23, 13 to 14. Take note. Proverbs 23, 13 to 14. Withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with a rod, he shall not die. Pastor, nagtuturo kayo ng paluin yung bata? Yan ang sabi ng Bible. Why? Because that correction. Pag mong papatayin. Ayan, no? Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. Proverbs 29, 15. Let's just get the whole principle here. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Ah. Some of you have seen this. Iwanan mo ang bata sa kanyang sarili, sa kanyang sariling barkada, sa kanyang sariling ways, sino eventually mapapahiya? Ang magulang. At bakit napahiya yung magulang? Sapagkat hindi ginawa ng ama ang rod of correction. Proverbs 29, verse 17. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. But then, we are reminded in Ephesians 6.4, anong sabi dito? Hindi porque, yun na nga ang sabi ng Bible, then yun na nga pinapangatawan na natin. But then, this is the guide. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the fear, in the nurture 
and admonition of the Lord. Mix that together, put a balance, you have a good father figure who disciplines, who corrects, who guides. You will not hear this from any other. You will not hear this from politicians. You will not hear this from academicians. You will not hear this kind of a message from universities. You will only hear this from Lighthouse. Oh, yes. That's the word of God. Number three. Ano pang father figure ang kailangan natin? Bilisan natin. Look. 15 verses 11 to 12 or laktawan natin yan mga kapatid 2 Corinthians 12 14 2 Corinthians 12 14 Behold, sabi ni Paul the third time I am ready to come to you and I will not be burdensome for you for I seek not yours but you for the children ought not to lay up for the parents can you read this? But the parents for the children. Okay. Ano yung una kanina? Oh, we need fathers who would take lead. Tama? In bringing spirituality in the lives of their children. Number two, we need fathers who would correct, who would discipline. Number three, we need fathers who will provide. Tama? The one principle that we follow here in Lighthouse, kaya ang sabi ko, huwag na huwag kayong magkakaroon ng relationship na wala pa kayong trabaho. Why? Because if you cannot provide for your own, hindi mo pinagpapahalagahan ang iyong pagiging ama. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 8. This is what the Bible says. But if any, are we reading this? But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house. Uy! Tama binababasa natin? Kung ay saraw, ay hindi niya masustina ang kanyang sarili. At kahit ang kanyang tahanan. Anong sabi? He hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Oh, the father figure. One that provides. Kaya alam nyo, sana ang lahat ng maging tatay ay hindi tamad. Amen. That's the father figure that we need. Napakataas naman ang standard natin, Pastor. See, we don't just live for our own. We live for our children. Gusto niyo ba na pag tayo mga tatay ay nagpakita ng kaduwagan at hindi tayo makapagsustina, ano na lang ay ituturo at ihemplo natin sa mga susunod pang henerasyon. Tama ba? Oh yes. Luke 11. Luke 11, 11 to 13. If a son shall ask bread of any of you, that is a father. Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? See, this is consistent with our Father in heaven. A father who provides. 
but let's, let us not malign and be negative about fathers who may have meager wages. Sapagkat ang panahon natin ngayon, challenging. But the principle is this. Unless you are ready to provide, wag kang magpapamilya. Amen? Wala na. Sabi niya siguro, Pastor, ang lupit yung mga magsalita. Eh, ang sabi ng Bible. We're just citing what the Word of God says. I have more verses to, ca- to say. But then for the sake of time. Number four. What else na kailangan nating father figure? First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children. Ito na. We need fathers who will love, who will encourage. Nakikinig ba tayo? Ha? And who will give support even morally. Kaya marami tayo mga young people who will turn to, the, to others. Nagiging mas malapit pa sila sapagkat practically nabubuhay tayo sa panahon nabubuhay tayo sa panahon na ang nagsasabi na lang sa mga anak na I love you ay mga nanay. Fathers, do this for once. Get to your children and tell them, I love you. We need fathers who will love, who will encourage, who will support. As a father doth his children. In fact, palagi kong sinasabi ito kapag ako yung nagkakasal. Sabi ng Bible, husbands, ano raw? Love your wives. Frankly, itino ka ng banal na kasulatan ang responsibilidad ng pag-ibig sa ama ng tahanan. Oh, get that. Iginawad ng salita ng Diyos ang responsibilidad ng pag-ibig sa ama ng tahanan. Kapag ang ama ng tahanan ay nagpapakita ng pag-ibig, iibig ang sambahayanan. Palagi ko siya nasabi yan. Kaya natin iniibig ang Diyos ay sapagkat siya ang unang nagpahayag at nagpakita sa atin ng pag-ibig. Tama. So we need fathers who will love, who will comfort, who will encourage, who will support. Can you smile? Parang parang hilaw. Lastly, what kind of a father figure do we need? Doon sa Luke chapter 15, we find the story of the prodigal. Itong prodigal na anak, hiningi yung kanyang mana sa kanyang tatay, at nung tinanggap niya yung kanyang mana, ay nagpakalayo-layo siya. At sabi ng Bible, he wasted his substance in riotous living. Naubos ang kanyang salapi. Naubos ang kanyang yaman. Until, naghihirap na siya ang trabaho niya ay magpakain ng mga baboy. It dawned on him. It came to him na wala na siyang maaasahan. And he began to think of his father. He came to himself. And he stood up and said, I will go to my father. And I will tell my father, I am no more worthy to be called your son. Just make me one of your hired servants. And he walked home. Pinapractice niya pa habang daan ang kanyang sasabihin, Ama, ako pa yung lubos na nagkasala sa iyo. Nilustay ko ang aking mana. Hindi na ako karapat-dapat na tawaging iyong anak. 
Subalit kung maaari po, mahabag kayo sa akin, kuli mo na lang ako bilang isa sa iyong mga alipin. Pinapractice niya pa yon. At habang daan, palapit siya ng palapit sa kanilang tahanan, hindi niya namalayan na ang tatay niya naghaantay sa kanya. Malayo pa siya. Siya ay nakakilala ng kanyang ama. At imbis na siya ang tumakbo papalapit sa kanyang ama, ang kanyang ama ang tumakbo papalapit sa kanya. Niyakap siya. Niyapo siya. Hinagkan siya. At sinabi niya, Ama, ako yung nagkasala sa iyo. Nilustay ko ang aking buhay. Hindi na ako karapat dapat tawagin iyong anak. Gawin na muna po na lang ako na isa sa iyong mga alipin. So, balit hindi ganun ang ginawa ng kanyang ama. In Luke chapter 15, we see the story, verse 20 to 23. And he, the father, arose, and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. And I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and now is alive. What is this? We need fathers who will forgive, who will restore, and who will give a brand new start. Kailangan natin ng mga ama na handang magpatawad. Handang mag-restore at handang magbigay ng panibagong simulain. Limang bagay para sa ating mga ama. Consistent with the word of God. Ba't tayo mayroong ganitong katuruan? Why? Sapagkat mayroon tayong ama sa kalangit, ama sa kalangitan, na nagpapakita ng lahat ng ito. And I tell you this morning, we can be like fathers, and real fathers that would have this quality, if we first of all come to our Father in heaven, and say, Father, forgive me. Give me a brand new beginning. And he will do that. He will open his arms and allow us in and bring us to himself and forgive us and give us eternal life. Oh, I pray this morning na ang mensaheng ito naging practical sa atin. Ang mensaheng ito ay naging aral at nagturo sa atin kung ano ang ating ama sa langit. Tanggapin mo si Jesus ngayon. Kung hindi ko pa siya tinanggap sa puso mo, ngayon ang panahon. Si Kristo ay nabayubay sa krus na matay at nabuhay na mag-uli upang tayo magkaroon ng kaligtasan at buhay na walang hanggan upang tayo maturuan kung paano maging tunay na ama. Tumuyo tayo lahat, manalangin tayo.